What's going on everybody? This episode we're going to create an API to get the details for a specific customer. This will query MongoDB for a single customer by its object ID. So to get started, we're going to create a new API endpoint inside of our customers folder, and this will be id.tsx. And we will say export default, and this will be a function and similar thing to what we did in the previous episodes we are going to use the next.js types import from next and the types are next api request and next api response these are going to be the types of our two parameters which we will call request or req type next api request and res for the response which will be a next api response we can get that id passed in from request.query and this is an object that will have that id as a property so we can destructure by saying const passing in id and assigning it request.query and then we can return this value just to confirm that everything is working so far by saying status 200.json and we will pass in that ID. So let's save and we will try this out. So you should be able to access this from not just slash customers, but from slash API slash customers slash 500, for example. And we get the result 500. So far so good. Now what we can do is take this ID value and query MongoDB. So let's go ahead and following what we did in the previous episode, make sure you watch it if you need a refresher, import our MongoDB client. We'll say import and this was called client promise from dot dot slash dot dot slash to go up two directories one more and three directories into library into mongodb and this is the default export actually so forgive me on that mistake there now what we can do is we can make a query here so after this line here, we will query MongoDB. We'll say const Mongo client is await client promise. In order to do this, we will need to be in an async function. So go ahead and define this function as async. And now we can make a query on this Mongo client by saying Mongo client dot DB dot collection, passing in our customer's collection dot find one and here we will pass in an object taking in underscore id for the property and here we will pass id however we will want to make sure this is of the right type not just a string so we will pass this to new object id which we will import from mongodb import object id from mongo db let's check our problem so far i think this is just complaining because we don't know what the type of id is so what we can do is just say as string which could potentially cause runtime problems passing to object id not being sure what is being passed in but if what's being passed in isn't a valid object id anyways then i'm not too worried about it this should return the data so let's go ahead and assign it to something we'll say const data and then we will await this call and this will allow us to pass that data back here so i'll pass in data here and see where we're at so far so let's check out first our customer's api to get a valid id we will copy one of these values and paste that in after a slash here and you can see it worked we got all the information for john smith so far so good and let's go ahead and try to put in something that doesn't exist, see what happens. We just get null. So what we can do is just check to see if data is null, and if it is, return a 404. The similar behavior in our Django backend would be as if we passed in 500, you can see we get a 404 not found because that customer ID doesn't exist. So what we can do is say if exclamation mark data, which will evaluate to true if data is null, and inside of here, we will say the response dot status code is 404 which is not found and you can include something in the response body such as customer not found now this should do the trick when you make a request to this data you get customer not found and if you request valid data you should get the customer data 
Which this actually brings up a question, is it correct to return 404 when a rest resource is not found? My take on this is that it is an appropriate response when you're getting the details API. One area of confusion though is that the user may not know if it's an incorrect path or if the ID is just wrong. So whenever you can return additional information, that could be helpful. So in this case, we are saying the customer was not found, which is a better response than if we just returned undefined, which I'll show you what that looks like. If we do undefined and do a refresh, well, now we just get this local host page cannot be found. And if we take a look at the network tab, this actually is the 404. We just don't get any extra information. So as a user of this API, I don't know if I need to change my URL or if I actually have a wrong ID. Now, if you were getting multiple customers and say that there actually wasn't any in the database, I think an empty array would be the best response over a 404. However, that's a little off topic from what we're trying to achieve in this episode. So let's go back to the 404 and fix this to say customer not found. Now, one more change I want to make to our output is to actually nest this in an object as we talked about before, assigning it to a customer property. This will make the response look like this with the customer property over here on the left, all within a single object. And that's just the convention that I've adhered to. And we did something similar for an individual customer. Say we passed in customer with ID one, it returns an object with a customer property with an object with all the different properties for that customer. Anywho, now that we have the customer being returned, what I want to do is extract this behavior in a function similar to how we did over in our customer list. So I had get customers. Now I want to make a get customer. So let's go up here and we will say export const get customer. And this is going to be an arrow function taking in the ID as a parameter. And we're going to say this is of type string. So in other words, I'm assuming they're going to pass in the ID as a string and we will do the new object ID on the inside of the function. You could do the other way where they already have it as an object ID and then you don't have to worry about the conversion inside of the function. Or you could do both where you could say this is a string or object ID and then you can check the type of the ID on the inside and decide if you want to convert it to an object ID or not. So let's go ahead and define this behavior by copying the majority of this code here and moving it up into our function. This will require the function to be async, which I always forget to type, but it's definitely important to use these await keywords inside of our function. And then all we will need to do is return data. So return data. And I'll save to get some reformatting. Now to get data down here, we will invoke that function. Const data is await get customer passing in the ID. Now I'm curious if you pass in an object ID and then you pass that to new object ID as a string, what will happen? I guess we'll find out. Let's try it. So this problem down here has a problem with our ID because it might be undefined if the query does not have an ID. However, I'm confident we will have one as if we don't have one, it will hit the index page. So what I mean by that is if we go over to localhost 3000 API customers, we have an ID here. If we didn't pass an ID in, we would just get the list of customers. So if I am hitting this page, then I can be sure that we have one. And I think we would need to rearrange how I did that. So I guess we would say request.query.id exclamation mark, and then just remove the destructuring. And now it complains that argument of type string or string array. So supposedly ID can be an array. Not entirely sure in what scenario it would be an array. You could do conditionals to check if it's of type array, and if so, grab the first element, whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna keep it simple and cast this as a string. And now we should be able to have our API work as it originally was. Doing a page refresh, you can see it's working. And now what I wanna do is I wanna to try to pass this in as an object ID, so let's say, new object ID passing in that ID as a string. Let's try that. We will do a refresh and it still works. So 
Either way this is invoked, whether they're passing in a string or an object ID, it'll do the trick. It's just a little redundant if you pass it in as an object ID, so you could case inside of this function, basically saying ID is now going to be equal to, and we can do a ternary type of ID being of type string. If so, then we will say new object ID. Otherwise, if it's an object ID, we'll just return ID. And then down here, we no longer have to do this conversion. So we will just say ID. Oh, that was a lot, but I think it should be good. So if we pass in a string, this will evaluate to true and it'll convert it to an object ID, which will be fine for down here. And if it's passed in as an object ID, it'll just stay an object ID and that's fine for down here as well. Another area of improvement is you can define the return type here as customer, but it's actually going to be a promise of customer because we're going to await this function call. So what that means is it will look like this where we pass in customer to a generic promise. And then we can say that MongoDB is expecting this to return a customer. That will fix all of the problems we just brought up. And for the return here, we can say that we are expecting to return an object with a customer property that is of type customer. Argument of type string. Ah, uh, okay, so that's for the 404. So it'll either return that object or it will return string. Those are some more changes you can make. Now we should be able to call this function over in our parameterized page, so customers here, where we have this Mongo code. So removing these lines here, we will now invoke get customer, and this is going to be imported from here. This will take the params.id, and we'll say const data, and assign the await for this function call which will then allow us to check everything else as normal. So let's save and see if any of that code works. We'll head over, check our API. It still appears to be working. And let's go visit a specific customer. Let's go first to the customer's page. We will grab a specific customer ID and paste that here. And it works, customer John Smith. I might just want to add a little bit of space there. It looks a little ugly, but other than that, everything was great. And going back to some of the content from the previous video, just as a little bonus, we have the ability to do the extra typing here as well. So in this situation, we were expecting a customer array, and this is going to return a promise of type customer array. And one other thing is we actually want this to say as customer array, my bad. And there we go. Well, that video is absolutely wild. Lots of stuff to cover. Hopefully it was helpful. I don't know, maybe. Also, let me know if the TypeScript is good to cover or if it's kind of distracting from the main point of the video. I personally like going through the TypeScript stuff because I'm getting more practice with TypeScript and getting a better understanding, but it can make writing code a little bit more challenging sometimes and other times make me want to die. But you know, that's part of software development, right? So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video where we're going to talk about different HTTP methods. Should be cool. Peace out, I'll see you then.